Hey guys, Josh here. Just wanted to check in. I'm sorry it's been a while since I've done an update video uh, that's been RC related. I've been doing a ton of 3D printing lately just because the weather here has been terrible. We've got all the storms coming in. Like, granted, the weather is worse in other places than it is here, but we do get the wind and the rain and it hasn't been all that great, so I haven't had a chance to do much flying. Just wanted to apologize for my voice as well. I went to a rock concert last night and saw Queens of the Stone Age and Royal Blood. It was awesome. Did a lot of screaming and obviously, partially lost my voice, so uh, if anything it just makes me sound deeper and I'm okay with that. That being said, I did get a little bit of flying in the other day with my Crossfire, now that it's working with the X7, and I ended up having a really good flight. I got about a mile and a half out, came back. That's not really pushing what the Crossfire can do, but it's what I was comfortable with at the time. Now, if you remember from my past video, I did the hardware modification that allows the Crossfire to work at its standard baud rate, and I'm using the modified Lua script that's been made available. That's been able to get it to work, and up till now, we've been waiting for a manufacturer solution or some solution that we won't have to modify the hardware to get this to work. Finally, that code has been updated. The patch has been submitted and approved. It is now on GitHub. And uh, if you look in my description, there'll be a post that links to a test build of OpenTX that will allow you to change the baud rate for the Crossfire to get it to work with the CRSF po protocol. Yes, I said protocol. Sorry. Now again, this is a beta build, essentially. I would consider this test code, I would consider it dangerous. Don't try it unless you're willing to accept the fact that it might do something wrong. I don't think it's going to, I haven't personally looked through it, but just keep that in mind. If you're gonna install this software, this has not been fully tested yet, so maybe wait a little bit if you don't wanna take the chance at having to buy another radio. Team Black Sheep up on their support section does have instructions on where to get the build and what to update on the actual Crossfire module to get this working and what you have to do. Um, there are some images as well in that thread for the hardware modification should you choose to go that route. Um, again, not recommended unless you're really handy with a soldering iron and really know what you're doing. These are small components and you're dealing with soldering wires directly to the PCB. Um, so if you're secure in doing that or you trust someone to do it for you, then, then I'm going to go ahead and recommend it just because it works really well. But if you're not confident or you don't have someone who can do it for you, don't do it. It's not worth it yet. In a couple weeks, we'll have fully tested code and it'll just be a firmware update and you'll be in the air in no time. So anyway, that's my update for now. Uh, sorry I don't have more for you. The weather is supposed to improve this coming weekend and I might be able to get out some more and do some more flying, maybe get some video for you and maybe even push that FODI a little bit, see how far I can get it out. If you have any success with the beta update that's been released for the Crossfire in the X7, please drop us a line down in the comments. Let everybody know what your experience has been with it so we can share this knowledge and get it out there. If you've done the hardware mod and were successful with that, let us know. Uh, again, I did that and I'm really happy with it, but it might not be for everybody. Be sure to give me a like if this information has been helpful and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos about RC, hobby, 3D printing, robots, whatever I can think of when I get bored. Thanks!